So here we are in the 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5. Uh, this is the top of the line vehicle uh, that, that Hyundai offers for the Ioniq. Uh, this is a $55,000 MSRP vehicle. This is a all wheel drive. Um, it has all the bells and whistles that Honda is going to offer. Uh, so it does have a highway drive assist, which we are currently using. It has a lane keep assist and then adaptive cruise control. So this is, uh, this would be level two of um, autonomy or level two of driving assist. So it is, a, it's a pretty good system. It's helping, it's keeping it in through these turns that we're going through. Uh, there are a lot of jerkiness to it. There's a lot of micro adjustments that are made. Uh, if you watch the steering wheel, it'll go back and forth just a little bit uh, to try and stay in the center of the lane. So you're going back and forth a lot uh, and you can feel it as you're driving, just going jerking back and forth. Um, it does require you to keep your hands on the wheel for this one. It's not like the Ford where there is the infrared camera inside. So just keeping my hands down on the bottom, a little bit of pressure, and that's enough to, uh, enough to tell the vehicle that I'm still here and still paying attention. Um, but there is, uh, with this, there's also a heads up display also on this vehicle. So that is repeating all of the information that's down on the cluster. So it has my, uh, my speed up there, it also tells me that I am in, uh, in highway driving assist mode. It gives me uh, what my cruise control is set to, and my cruise is set a little bit faster than we're going because it does have uh, adaptive cruise control, and we're just staying with the flow of traffic right now. Um, it does also give you blind spot indication, indicator warnings in the heads-up display, uh, which is something that I like, so you don't have to, uh, you know somebody's there still while you're looking forward you don't have to uh, don't have to look and see that the somebody's there on the indicator on the mirrors um, as far as driving this uh, the vehicle accelerates well it, it, it gets up to speed there's no problem getting onto the interstate and merging uh, it is a uh, it is a pretty good electric vehicles from an acceleration standpoint I uh, didn't feel it was lacking any power. Uh, comparing it, you know, having just driven the Model S Plaid, this is, uh, it is a stark difference to that, but trying to keep our frame of reference to other electric vehicles that would be in this vehicle's price class. Um, there are a lot of creature comforts that Hyundai put into this vehicle. Um, and one of the other safety things here is when you turn on your blinker, it will show you in the cluster what's there um, and since I am doing the highway drive assist when I turn my blinker on it automatically changed lanes for me I didn't have to uh, switch lanes so we'll do that again here once we get around this curve just to see if we can uh, see if we can capture that on on video a little bit better so here we get around this turn we're gonna need to get right a lane again there's we have an exit that's coming up so if we turn on our our blinker again uh, Nope, it's not. It's not going to do it that time. So we'll we'll pass this car and we'll try it again. So if we turn on the blinker, it's bringing us into the into the next lane, centering us. Uh, it does not doesn't automatically turn the blinker off, so we'll turn it off for it. Uh, so that's something that Ford was not doing, was not doing a um, lane change assist for you. That's something that Tesla is doing, but Hyundai is doing that as well. And uh, just having some fingers on the steering wheel isn't enough. It's asking me again to, to grab onto the steering wheel. Um, their, the user interface in here was, is very easy, very intuitive. I uh, was able to get the navigation set up to take us back to Monroe without any issue. Nope, 
it doesn't want to do the auto lane change this time. I'm not sure why. Sometimes it'll change lanes for us with a blinker and sometimes it won't. your hands on the steering wheel. My hands are on the steering wheel. I'm not putting any real pressure on it though, so I don't know if it's if it's a weight in, input that it wants or if it's a sensor in the steering wheel. Uh, don't know if it's a pressure on the on the steering wheel that it inputs or if it's a sensor on the steering wheel. Uh, but it's probably a pressure sensor it's in the steering column because if I, I'm just lightly touching it, that's not enough for it. It needs some, uh, needs some input of me having my hands on the wheel. All right, I was able to uh, use these the paddle shifters some more. This is for regenerative braking. Um, when it's in full regen braking, it's called I pedal. That's their one pedal driving. So uh, you can. See, we're driving along with traffic, and if I let go of the accelerator, you can feel how hard that that's, or maybe you can't feel it. Uh, I can feel it. You can see how hard uh, that was braking for us. Uh, we'll, we're driving along here. We'll come up to, to a place we can slow down a little bit again, and you'll be able to see uh, how aggressive this is. So you can set this with the paddle shifters. Uh, they have I pedal, and then it goes down to level three, two, one, and then it goes to zero, and zero is just a normal coast, uh, coast down. So there's some different levels of regenerative braking that you can easily switch between. Uh, as far as the user interface for this, to put these on paddle shifters, it seems a little bit of uh, overkill for these. It could be something that was integrated into the touch screen, uh, into one of the menus. It's not something if I'm driving that I'm going to be changing a lot, not something that I need this easy of access to. So it's something that they've incorporated that it is good to be able to adjust your regenerative braking. Don't need to adjust it every, you know, every time you're out for a drive or every, every few miles that you go. So something on the screen would have been more than enough to save uh, the integration of these parts and reduce some parts on the vehicle. All right, so we're back on uh, on the interstate. We're checking to see if the Hyundai Ionic will do a automatic lane change when we have an exit coming up. We're in a middle lane. It's in the highway drive assist with nav, so it knows that we need to be taking an exit coming up here in a little less than a mile. I'm just trying to see if this will do a, a lane change for us or if that's something that the, uh, the driver still has to do. Uh, short of it telling me to keep my hands on the steering wheel, it does not look like it's going to automatically switch lanes for the exit. It would have been something that uh, the driver still would have to do. Um, so it's not, it's not getting you ready to take an exit. It just is telling you that there's an exit coming up and the driver still has to uh, adjust lanes. So. That was just kind of a, a check to see what the, the full uh, highway drive assist does. So we're recalculating route since we missed our exit. We'll take the next one. But what it does do is you just turn the, turn the blinker on and it will change lanes for you. Or at least it was before. Sometimes they'll change lanes for you. So we're going to have to change this lane ourselves and get over to get the next exit. There we go. This time when I had my blinker on, it went over and did the lane change for me. Doesn't turn the blinker off, though, so I have to turn the blinker off. And now we're off the interstate, so the highway drive assist is turned off. So overall, um, in driving the Ionic 5, uh, it drives really well. There's there's plenty of uh, pickup and the handling is good. It, it feels like it's a, uh, it, you stay, stay tight to the road. It's a good, good driving vehicle. 
Um, it's the interior, as I said before, the interior is very well appointed. Uh, Honda is doing that with a lot of their vehicles in the last few years. Uh, they're, you're getting a lot more features in a Hyundai than you would in another vehicle at the same price point. And uh, that's, that's evident in this vehicle as well. And you gotta get sun, sun down. Um, but this does, does appear that it'll be a, a contender in the, in the US market. Once it gets here, it is not fully available yet. It's only available in select states. It's gonna be later this summer before uh, it's available everywhere in the US. So I just took the Plaid through its paces and oh my God, was that fast. So we're gonna take this Hyundai Onyx 5 through the same course and uh, see what it can do and we'll compare the times. All right, here we go. So that was pretty fun. Um, this thing's got some, some juice, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the Imperium. <laughs> 